Watch Campus, Kim Bremer here, and thank you for tuning in to another episode of Campus Boss. Boy, I'm mean, like talent, they are can done. This week, we'll be speaking with a poet, Melissa Murray, from the University of Technology, pursuing a bachelor's in communication arts and technology. Melissa, welcome, welcome, welcome to Campus Boss. Thank you for having me. All right, so just to get right into it, as you know, me not in a deeper lately and the talking, talking, we just want to find out your business. So uh, tell me, when you started writing, when did you discover this talent? I started writing when I was about 15 or 16, but while at Walmart, I used to write and I show my friends and they always said, you know, this good, you can publish it. And I said, no, I'm not into the publishing, I, I just write. For myself, you know, when I, when I get the urge to write, I just put the pen to paper and get it done. It wasn't anything that I intended to go far with. All right. So tell me when you did your first publication. I know you have you've you've done some anthologies. So tell me how you got into all of that. My first publication was in 2010, I think. My friend told me to submit a poem to the Gleaner. They said that you could submit to the Gleaner and they would publish it in the Sunday Gleaner. And that's what I did. I sent in a poem to them and the following Sunday it came out in the Gleaner. So when I saw it, I just started running around the house. <laughs> oh gosh. And I got excited. I liked the feeling that I got from it. And I decided to send more and eventually it, it progressed. And then I joined some poetry groups on Facebook. Think Out Loud was one of them and also Poets with Voice is Strong, and they told me that they'd have an anthology being published and you should submit poems for consideration. And I submit a few, and they all got selected. So it was published wow. in Canada, I think, yes. So with Brian Rickson's poetry books, so yeah. All right, so um, you've expressed that your poems are your voice, and trust me, our poem them tear jerking here, like, Real, some real, real serious thoughts in these poems. Um, have these experiences been anything that you have experienced or anybody close to you have experienced? Yes. Has experienced? Yes. Um, some of them are directly related to me. Some are not. I basically write about issues that are rampant in society because there are a lot of things in Jamaica that people really don't they, ch they try to turn a blind eye to it, and I am here to put a voice to the voiceless. All right, tell me more about this poem, the happy poem. <laughs> oh, that <laughs> one. You want to know tell me them know what's this poem about? That one was the one that caught me. Oh, that poem. Well, let me give you the background for that. A friend of mine, um, she, she, you know, I share my poems with my friends, or so. So, one of them said to me, "Why you can't write a happy poem? I my dear, if you write a happy poem, so I said, happy poem. Me think about it, and then I realized that other people asked me to write a happy poem, and then I, I sit down and I say, happy poem. How oh, am I gonna do this? So I sat down and I put on the pen and I was like, and I started and I wrote. I was asked to write a happy poem. It wasn't even supposed to turn out into a poem, you know. <laughs> and then <laughs> I, I, I got stuck and I just couldn't figure out what to write. So I just said, I was asked to write a happy poem. How do you know when a poem is happy? Do the words have a smile from ear to ear? Do the lines jump out and shout, hey, I'm a happy one. And then eventually I just started writing all the things that happy poems, they contradict my poetry because if you're going to force me to write a happy poem, you're not um, allowing me to be true to myself, true to what I believe in. You're telling me to write something that you would feel more comfortable reading, so that means you really don't want to hear about all the things that are happening. You want to just close the door, turn a blind eye to it, and I'm not about that life, you know. Um, I, noted that, I noticed that you said psychology is the field that you'd want to be in, that you'd want to have a career in, but you're doing communication arts. So I was wondering, hmm, psychology and communication arts, oh, I wish them fun, I wish they them fun. <laughs> so tell me more about this aspiration, how you intend to get there. Okay, the psychology, it has always been in the back of my mind. 
I've always liked the idea of just being that ear for someone and giving advice to people because I, I know what it's like to you know want somebody to talk to and you can't really have that person to talk to. So I, I decided that um, I want to be a psychologist, but then I thought to myself, I'm usually a shy kind of, I don't really do well with the whole communication aspect of things. So I decided that, oh, a course in communications. And then I thought, that, okay, if I do a course in communication, then I can probably get a good enough job. And of course, I can pursue the degree in psychology if needs be. All right, so it's time for a random pick question. But before we get into the question, which can get a little personal, so prepare yourself mentally for this. We're going to take a break and we'll be back. Welcome back to Campus Bus. It is now time for a random pick question. We're going to first in Malaysia business for a little minute. Yes, yes, yes. And the question is in her hand. Handwritten letter or type email. Or hey, type. I think they're trying email. to find out if you want a little admirer to send you a letter or a typewritten email. Uh, handwritten letter. I believe that it's more sentimental. Mm -hmm. if, you, if you type, you know, you're used to a computer screen or your phone screen, but when you have a piece of paper in your hand that, you know, this person put the ink down on it just for you, it's, it's, uh, it's, you're, you're able to appreciate it more. So, uh, handwritten so letter. As a psychologist. <laughs> <laughs> you know, this episode of Campus Bus wouldn't be complete without the Teach Me Something New segment. It's now time for Malaysia to teach me something new. So the floor is yours. Uh, okay. Um, I think if if you're into writing or anything at all that you're interested in, don't be afraid to showcase it because I was afraid to put my work out there because I wasn't sure what people's reaction would be. But I can guarantee you that once you you put that out there and get feedback from people, you'll begin to appreciate it more. And from that, you can only grow. You can only become a better person. You can only become better at what you do. So. Don't be afraid. That's all I can say. Never be. Afraid. There's never a dull moment on campus, boss. You have definitely reminded me of something that I know, but sometimes forget. So, what's the next big thing for Melisha? What kind of what can we expect poetry-wise from Melisha? In terms of poetry, I can't really tell you to look out for something. I go for, with inspiration whenever I get that urge to write. Whenever something just comes up and I, I feel compelled to write about it, so it can only just sit and wait for something to happen. All right. Uh, so tell us where we can find your work. On, uh, you can find me on Facebook, Melisha N. Murray, or my blog, poeticwarrior.webs.com, or you can just Google me. Ah. Just type in Melisha N. Murray Poetry, and you find me. I say, you know, when you're famous, <laughs> you know. <laughs> It was indeed a pleasure having you here on campus, boss. Inspiring words from a very, very talented young woman. Thank you for having me again. This brings us to the end of this week's episode of Campus Bus. I'm your host, Kim Bremer. A big shout out to our sponsors, JNA and Go Places Clothing. Them not stop giving me nice t shirts. <laughs> this one I say, what? No healings. All right, so thank you for tuning in. Continue to like and share our video. We appreciate it. And without you, there'd be no Campus Bus because who would we be making these episodes for? You can contact us at iwatchcampusbus at gmail.com. See you next week. Take a minute. Visualize your mother's cervix being beaten like a piñata because some guy craves the candy she has inside. Visualize strange hands gripping neck, gripping breast, gripping chest as you grip the last strand of sanity you have left. 
Feel that knot in your throat as you get gripped by fear. Then visualize yourself banishing the thoughts of raping. <laughs>